God bless everybody today. It's June 4th of 2021. It's 3.21 a.m. Central Time. We're going to talk again about the Bitcoin potential crash and how it's going to affect us over the weekend. Um, you can find all my articles and everything I do on my eschatology page at End of Days Survival, End of Days Survival .com. So if we look at Bitcoin's chart, we can notice that we had this main downtrend. It has reduced and lifted some, but the trajectory is still down, as you can see, and it's still hemorrhaging. We're at 36,006. 12.1 um, this was 38 to 39,000 just a day or so ago um, another thing I wanted to show you was on this chart it looks now Wyckoff he was a as far as I can tell pretty smart guy and so we can see this movement from here to here before we start this deep descent we see this movement of basically accumulation down into this this trench and I keep saying Wyckoff had this pretty much figured out over a hundred years ago how these systems and markets works so if you look at his he has four main charts, uh, two distribution charts and two accumulation charts. And you'll notice that this distribution chart, um, I think I called an accumulation earlier. I'm sorry if I did. Um, this distribution chart looks like the very top of Bitcoin prior to the drop and then working into the phase that we're in right now which is about right in here somewhere okay so if you go out and look at this structure of how these humps occur prior to the dip and then we end up in SC which I'll show you on this other chart that Bitcoin and Dogecoin both have a similar look to their chart and so if we bring this look together we can see that this is Wyckoff's original first distribution chart and then we go down to the accumulation phase down to SC which is this very point here on the bottom and you can tell that Wyckoff knew that if you put these charts together they would create continuous waves that this is harmonics within the markets itself that he could see these waves you know, sort of like a sound wave it comes up and it does certain things it comes up and as Bitcoin did it did all this you know, upward momentum hit all these highs up here um, around 64,000. Doge was around 74 cents. And then it just plummeted down to this SC, which we showed you on the map or on the charts, um, is that very low point that we um, originally had right after the Saturday Night Live um, and Bitcoin destruction up here. This thing started to drop and we hit that SC and we've been basically following this path since. And I want to show you how that works. So as we came off those peaks up here and we came down here, we can start to chart these points on Bitcoin. So you can actually go out on Bitcoin and see these physical uh, numbers and when that occurred, which I placed down here on the bottom. So you can actually go and see. Now, I may have used a day chart or a four-hour chart or whatever to come up with these, and I'm not sure I used the same chart, but they're close to the numbers we need to understand where these moves happen. And so 
Um, basically, as you come through here, you come down. We started that trend down through Saturday Night Live, and then Musk did the Bitcoin tweet, and that continued to um, what I call shoot an arrow in Bitcoin, and it's bleeding out ever since. And you know, I'm doing I'm, this was my like ninth update video in like two or three weeks here, and so this was the extremely slow bleed out. But you can follow these numbers, okay? And we are to a certain point. Now, I like Doge's chart because I think it shows the manipulation better. But Bitcoin's the same. It had one peak that wasn't quite as high, and I'll show you where that's at. But in general, the chart pretty much runs the same. So Doge came down, hit the um, preliminary support, which was 0.42111.2. It came back up to 0.5. Five nine one six four two seven came down to the selling climax at point two two one zero zero zero. Probably should have another zero there. Then it came up to the auto rally. So you got accumulation. Auto rally was at uh, point four three six zero 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 zero. It came down to the secondary test, which was at 0 0.2470995. It came back up to 38 cents, uh, pretty much right on the nose. It dropped back down between these two points at two, uh, 0.2802706. And then it rose all the way up to almost that top resistance line. Now, this top resistance is where I had calculated um, on May 15th at uh, basically 3 o'clock central. Um, this high point had occurred and that Wyckoff was telling us that if you looked at these high resistance points that this would manipulate almost up to that point and it did it went to 0 0.4490000 and now we are in the process of moving down okay down this trough and you're going to see all these bumps all the way down it's just going to continue to drop and then it will trench and then it will drop and then it will go up a little and then it will trench and then it but it's going to end up in ST in phase B at around 16 cents, I believe, at least if ICOP is right. So if we look at Doge's chart, we had that first distribution phase. We came down. We had the uh, episode of Saturday Night Live. And then Musk... Um, shot the arrow in Bitcoin, and then we dropped to that. Um, now up here you've got your preliminary support, you go to the selling climax, you come back up to the auto rally, you move down to the secondary test, we came back up to the top resistance line, um, again, or to that midpoint, um, up towards the top resistance line. Then we came back down, and then we came up to that top resistance line, okay, which is right here at 0 0.4490000. And now we are in that trench um, moving back downwards um, to the um, ST in phase B, which I believe is um, at 16 cents, at least on Doge's chart. And Bitcoin's chart is no different. Um, as you can see, you had a high here of 64,900. Came down, then we started in that distribution phase. Um, these bumps here, right before the Saturday Night Live thing. Must tweet 
that damaged Bitcoin. We started to see that massive descent. We got into the uh, preliminary support. We got into the selling rally. We came back up, did the um, auto rally, moved back down to the secondary test. We now have started to move up through and have hit our uh, top resistance line here. So that'd be your top resistance line is right about in here. And then we started to drop back down again. And so now, again, we're in this potential um, downward momentum, which would take us to ST in phase B. And in Bitcoin's uh, case, I believe it's 28,800. So we're at 36,641.02. Um, I show that the outer limit of the ST in phase B for Bitcoin is 28,800. And so this could drop another 8,000 points um, pretty easily. Um, so let's go look at Bitcoin's chart real quick. So like I said, if you go to Bitcoin's chart, and I, I know these charts are getting old. They're getting old looking at them. Um, that's all I've done is look at these charts for a long time. But we came to that preliminary support. We came out to SC, came back up to the um, automatic rally, went back down to the uh, secondary test. This was the selling rally, um, or selling climax, excuse me. This is the secondary test. We came up. A little bit came back down came only up now it was interesting doge's chart did deviate a little here um, we have this point here and this point here which are these two points here but then we only came up to 39,471 on bitcoin prior to now in this descent um, like I say we need, we know we're at um, thirty six thousand. We need to get to twenty eight eight in this downward trend to hit ST in phase B. I do believe this has deviated a little because they're basically pushing Dogecoin up to a higher level uh, because it's you have to manipulate Doge more than maybe Bitcoin. And that then they'll automatically start dumping this down to the ST in phase B. And I don't know how long this will take. We're moving into Friday. It could be by the, um, you know, sometime by the end of this weekend, we will see this massive descent um, to ST in phase B. But then we still have to come back up and retest this resistance line up here before we hit the spring and that may be another week or so to, you know, seven to ten days down the road and i know this is uh, starting to extend out but you can't look at wyckoff and not look at how this is moving and these are real numbers all these numbers are taken directly off these charts so you have to look at that and wonder how wyckoff sort of knew this you know was going to happen and after he had looked at charts for you know 50 years and saw these reoccurring themes that run through these charts he he did know that the movement of the charts did happen this way and that it did affect us now will i have to move this date out it seems to be that this might be another week later um as we move out here and i i don't have a crystal ball i cannot tell you these things all i can tell you is that it seems to be following the chart so if you go back to doge's chart you'll um, notice that we're we just came off this 44,009 um, resistance line and i now believe that we are about halfway down because we're at about 36 cents 36.5 on doge that we're going to end up down around 16 cents. Now this is an outer limit. I do not know if we will go this far down, but that is what it's telling us. And then within potentially another week, we're going to see a potential rise hit this top resistance line again 
or come close to it or maybe bounce off of this resistance line something so far he's taken it to the the composite man has taken it to all the extremes at this point so i don't doubt that the shakeout down here is going to be extreme on all limits of this chart because the composite man knows that we know what he's doing and so he has the most information he has all of the charts he has all the information he has all the answers he's been doing this for hundreds of years and the institutions know how to manipulate this system but because there is so much going on here there's so much hype there's so many things happening with um, elon's tweets and all these different things that are occurring i believe that the composite man will have to take these to the outer limits of the chart to bring fear into the industry into the market and so he will then force this basic shakeout and so what will happen is just like it had occurred um i was listening to one group they all bought around 40 cents because it was going to go up here okay and so you know they were sort of misled to a certain degree you know they don't try to advise on these channels but people take it as advice and when you know people are bullish um you know they listen to these guys and then they make bad decisions so you you bought a bag at 44 45 50 you know 50 60 cents up here and you couldn't get rid of it and this thing's going down to 16 cents you have a serious choice to make you either sit on that bag and hope it comes back up to you and you can either sell out or wait and hold until it really goes up over here or you sell out in here somewhere and you take a loss and you ride this thing down in the potential that you can pick up many more uh, tokens or coins down here. And so when you bring it back up, it it's you know it doubles and triples in value as you move up the ladder instead of potentially a small loss up here. You sold down, you know, you sold here, came down here. And even if you were at 38 cents up here, you could sell your bag, take your loss, come down here and pick up a bag for half price and regain your profits on the other side. And what they do is what they call averaging down. You know, they'll buy some at, let's say, if it's a, you know, you realize what's happening and you're at 38 cents and maybe you bought at 40 cents up here. You would buy it, you know, let's say 38 cents and then maybe because you don't know how far this is going to go down. And, the, you know, so then you would buy it 38 cents and then maybe 33 cents and then maybe 25 cents and then 20 cents. And then you finally get down to your last little bit, which is 16 cents. And you want to use a smaller bag to start and then work into your heavier or higher bags as you move down. And so. Let's say you had a thousand dollars at forty cents here. You spent a hundred dollars, and you spent two hundred dollars, and then you spent another three hundred dollars, and then you come down here and you know what? Spend your last four hundred dollars. You get your biggest bang, but then you average the cost. You may be at let's say twenty-five cents by the time you're done, but you get a better feel, and you don't know the gap um, where it's going to drop down to for sure especially if you don't know why coughs in place here so are we running into a potential bleed out of bitcoin it's not improving um it it came out a little on the lateral and it has moved um into a higher trench but then i could say it's moving down back down again and all markets right now are down um, it doesn't matter what market you look at um, in the crypto side they're all pretty much down right now there might be a few winners out there but you've got a coin here that went from 64,900 to 
to 36,800 and potentially could go down to 28,800 on the initial um, selling climax. This could go down even further. Um, and like I say, the 28,800 is the ST in phase B. And then you hit that spring. That could go below that 28,800. That could be at 25,000 or 20,000 or even lower. And if that happens, we have a serious problem in the crypto markets. And um, will it come back quickly uh, once it finally gets down to that point? I don't know. Right now, we are seeing this slowly bleed out. If you go to Doge's chart, Doge is in a similar, um, you know, we had a little rally up here. We had that um, selling climax here. We had that secondary test. Uh, we came back up a little. Then we went all the way back up to that resistance line. And now we're in the process of retrenching back down in that angular descent towards um, ST in phase B. And in this case, would be from 44.9 uh, cents um, basically down to potentially 16 cents. Will that happen? So far, this has followed Wyckoff's charts to the letter. And so we have to look at this descent right now. We're at 36, uh, 36 and a half cents on Doge um, from the resistance wall where it hit up here um, at 44 um, 9,000 and uh, that's 44.9 cents all the way down to potentially 16 cents um, and then we still got this additional move back up um, before we get out of this into phase E we're still at the very beginning of phase B here so um, We've got to really got to watch this thing. Um, you know, like I say, I started these charts back on May 17th. It's June 4th. This has been a long process to get to here. And we've got a lot of chart left here. So we'll see where this ends up. I'll try to keep doing some updates. Maybe not as many because I know this is getting a little old. Um, this spring is where we have to really, really be careful. This one, this ST in phase B could be potentially extreme. But once you come back up and you come back to the spring and you potentially could hit eight cents or lower, um, I'm not saying it's going to go that low, but it's got it, it's based on the model, it has to go below 16 cents. So it could go to 12, could go to eight, could go to four, or it could even go lower and so we need to look at all these options and how Wyckoff potentially saw these patterns and how he could predict how the markets worked and how the composite man manipulates the market to the extremes of this to take the money from the basic people and the investment groups and the institutions because he's not only shaking out you He's shaking out institutions, real institutions with real money. And so if that's the case, we need to understand the game the composite man is playing and to what extremes he can take us in this market. And this will affect the equity markets and the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P as we move forward. And what have we seen in just the last couple weeks? We started to see a severe bleed out of the markets themselves. Um, there's been a fairly massive drop in them. Um, in the last week, they can't get traction. And so as this thing just gets worse and worse, the uh, Dow and the markets will also suffer the same uh, consequences they may not recover as quick as the crypto markets because people will start to move away from these equity markets 
into commodities like gold, silver, crypto, and other things because they don't want to lose their investments that they basically worked their whole lives for on a spring that potentially could dump them down to levels that we've not seen before in a long time. So God bless everybody. Um, keep an eye on this madness. Find the open door. That is Jesus. That is the Son. He is the only way to heaven. The Jews need to find the Son. Um, they're going to be under judgment, um, extreme judgment here soon. Um, as the Erdogan starts to engulf the Middle East. And we just saw a new uh, president of Israel elected. That was Isaac Herzog, I believe is how you say his name. And I believe he is the third of the three kings in my uh, paradigm. I thought it was Netanyahu. Um, it was a potential the third king was just a first-term king or president of that country. Now we know who that person is, and so now we can look at the paradigm um, that I presented and see who the three kings are and how that might also affect us as we move into the next few years. God bless everybody. Find that open door, Jesus. Time is short. Get oil in your lamp. Put some food in your homes. I just saw an article that stated that global food costs surged to a decade high as drought parches crops. Okay, this was a brand new article, came out on Bloomberg. Um, I've been warning about this hyperinflation of commodities that you all use every day, and that is food, gas, um, you know, everything is going up, but your paychecks aren't. And so that's why I've been talking about the crypto and how uh, we need to use this system until we can't. And so please look at, you know, what's going on out here and protect your families, friends, um, and the ones you love. God bless. Have a great day.